So I'm Alex. I think I must, must have talked to most of you so far. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the Jasmine Notebook Service and DAS Gateway on Jasmine. Um, and at the end, we might move on to the Group Workspace Scanner as a kind of separate talk in itself, but a couple of slides. So first to introduce the Jasmine Notebook Service. Um, so we have our own Jupyter Hub instance, which runs in our Kubernetes cluster. Um, this is not the same thing as the cloud that we've just been hearing about. It's a rancher cluster um, managed by us. Um, and users can spin up their own notebook in their own container. Um, and the advantage of doing this rather than using a different Jupyter notebook service is that the CD archive is mounted read-only on the notebook pods. The users' home directories from the rest of Jasmine's are available, um, and the group workspaces are available inside the notebooks. So that integration with the rest of Jasmine is the kind of reason to use the Jasmine notebook service. Um, as of this year, we've done some work, and the group workspace is, are now writable from the notebook service. So you can write to your home directory, you can write to the group workspaces, and you can read the CD, CD, CD archive from inside the notebook service, which is starting to make it a really powerful tool. And we use it a lot, especially for training and workshops, because you can go from zero to a kind of Python environment with all of the Jasmine tools installed. Oh, that's a, that's a point I kind of forgot is it also has the latest version of Jasmine installed in it all of the time as well. Um, so it's kind of customized for Jasmine um, due to notebook service. Um, However, user notebooks do have limited resources. Um, can't exactly remember the exact amount, but it's limited by how much resource is available in our Kubernetes cluster at the time. Um, and with kind of a, a peak time, maybe like a few hundred pods spun up, like 800, that's probably more, more reasonable. That resource is constrained. Um, and a good way of getting around this, if you're writing Python software, is to use the Dask parallel processing library. Um, for those who don't know about that, I'm just going to give a little bit of in introduction to that, what Dask is. Um, so it's an open source parallelization library for Python. It's a powerful and really flexible tool that allows a, re a really big variety of different kind of workflows. Um, there are some examples that I put up the side here of how you might do something that you were doing in a different common library in Dask. So if you're using Pandas, you can switch to a Dask data frame. Um, if you're using NumPy, you can switch to Dask arrays. Um, or you can go lower level and start out with Dask and make some really powerful parallel workflows. Um, but it, it's a real spectrum of if you are using, say, X-Array, I put this at the bottom, and a Dask client's available, all you have to do is tell it to chunk your data set, and it finds Dask by magic and uses Dask. Um, I would say that I am definitely not an expert user of Dask. Um, while I've used it a bit, I'm sure many of you out there in the audience have optimized your workflows much more than I'm kind of able to. Um, so this is a really extremely powerful tool that we'd like to be able to use in Jasmine, both in the notebook service and outside of the notebook service. Um, but we're focusing this work on being a really powerful addition to the notebook service as a starting point. Um, so so the, the kind of starting point is we'd like to be able to run these Dask workers in Lotus. How Dask works is it has a scheduler that you start up and it spins up workers, which is where your parallel workflow runs. You can do this on your own laptop and that'll let you do sort of larger than memory computation um, or you can spin it up in HPC and get to some really seriously big workflows. Um, it's previously been difficult, and I've been chatting to a few of you, and I know you have done it, um, but the all of the different parts have to be able to chat to each other, um, and Dask kind of opens random ports for the scheduler to talk to the uh, workers. Um, and it's generally been not a great user experience inside Jasmine. Uh, we'll just pretend nothing happened. 
generally be not a good user experience inside Jasmine and definitely be not a good user experience if you're only using the notebook service because you'd have to work out how to log into the side machines, submit stuff into Lotus, wait for it to happen, that kind of thing. The answer to this problem to make it easier for users is Das Gateway, which is it's made by the Dask people um, designed for this designed for this problem. Um, it's a service which runs on a da Jasmine DM and it basically helps users set up Dask clusters easily. Um, so how it works is you, you're a user, you're outside the Jasmine cluster in the notebook service. You ask Dask Gateway, basically give me a Dask cluster and it goes off in the background, submits the jobs into Slurm for you and passes you back. This is where your cluster is. You can talk to it. Um, it's quite nice for us because it means that we know that this one machine is talking to all of the Dask clusters and we don't have to worry about, you know, users on the side machines talking to random places inside Jasmine. Um, and it's quite nice for the users because you get one single point where you can talk to. Um, I've got a bit of a, oh, hello. Video of it working, but we, I'm just going to skip through it because I'm aware that we're kind of short on time. Um, in fact, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip the video completely, uh, kind of go freestyle, I've got some code. So if you want this to work, if you're in the J Jasmine notebook service, all you have to do is use this code that is on the screen now. It's available in, in GitHub on that, on, on that link. And that code is basically, you tell it where Dask Gateway is, and it's at daskgateway.jasmine.atv.uk. And if you put this auth equals Jupyter Hub, well, that might even be the default. Um, it basically, it gets an environment variable that's provided by Jupyter Hub and uses that to authenticate against Das Gateway Machine. That's how it knows that it's you. The Das Gateway Machine then submits jobs on your behalf into Lotus. Um, you can conf configure the options. So you can ask for a different amount of workers. Um, you can actually set, set up more than one cluster. So this sort of bit here is just to make sure that you're not getting more than one by mistake. Um, and you can scale your cluster up and down. And the, the final bit is once you've got a class client, you just treat it like desk normally. Um, so the client is available. Um, there are a few caveats there, which um, are the desk gateway machine is inside the Jasmine firewall. So if you want to access the nice DAS cluster dashboard, um, at the moment you have to use the NX login service to get a browser inside the firewall. Um, we are, I've been looking into solutions to this, but basically the way JupyterHub proxies things doesn't add authentication onto it. And we can't have it, the unauthenticated dashboard outside of the firewall. Um, so, that's Das Gateway, and that's what you can use it for. Um, yeah, there was a bit more in the um, video, but I think it's probably a good time to answer, ask questions. Oh, Jesse, your microphone now. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I have no? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, uh, who would be using DAS? DAS. Why? What? What things? What applications would DAS be suited to? So, I guess anything you want to parallelize in Python. So, as I say, uh, like if you're using X-Ray, which is a commonly used library to load NetCDF, say that has that's built in and you get a kind of free speed up just by having a Dask client available in your environment. Um, I, I'm looking at like guys in the middle here who are using Dask, what are you using it for? Reading and analysis. Any, any large non-file or calculations basically. Yeah. Very Great, thanks. Go Jack. Oh. So, does this still work with the magic when you call X-ray with chunks? 
when you when you call when you made your, your once, once you got to the bottom of my block of code here, yeah. then that client is a normal DAS client, and yeah, we'll work with the X Ray Magic, um, and then works with anything. Out. Yeah, okay. I believe that DASK are looking at ways of making the gateway API closer to the way you normally spin up a DASK cluster, but that's not work that we're doing on Jasmine. That's just the upstream kind of movement. Right in the middle. Is it strictly for kind of array-based parallelization, like the kind of arithmetic operations, or could it be used as kind of a replacement for, say, Python multiprocessing to do more sys operations kind of stuff? Uh, Matt's, Matt's <laughs> saying like he might know the answer to this. <laughs> so technically speaking, Dask is a task-based parallelization framework. So yes, you could use it to replace multi process. You basically just give it Python functions to you, you, you say execute this Python function on this set of things. Yeah. So it's task space. What it does is forms a um it, it basically processes your Python code and mm -hmm. out of that it forms a, a, a DAG, so a direct a, a directed acyclic graph, and then it just works its way through the graph basically, but it's might be the I don't have you a picture of the actual graph. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's just a video. <laughs> <laughs> I can't press. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing said. There's, it's, a, it's a generic task based parallelization framework that just happens to be really tightly integrated with NumPy because the most common thing you want to do this on is massive calculations. And they wanted to lower the barrier to entry for people who already knew NumPy. Any more questions? Oh. Uh, hi. Uh, you already answered the first bit, like uh, the authentication problem. So, related to that, uh, are there any plans to? Make it available outside the Jasmine firewall. That's the first question, and then there is another one. Outside the Jasmine firewall, I don't know. I don't think we've considered that. We could look at what the implications would be. Um, I'd like to get the dashboard accessible outside the firewall, but I don't know that we'd be looking at Dask itself. It's also worth saying you can have a whole Dask. So this is the exact same technology. Dask in the external cloud users. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's, that's Jupyter Hub plus Dask gateway. Yes, because from a user's perspective, I find it more useful if I can just log into the Jupyter Notebook service through the browser instead of the VM, for example. Yeah. That's one thing. The second thing was are there some use cases or some tutorials or recipes which you have and you can point me out towards? I have a few examples, like the one done in this video, uh, but really the examples are fairly rudimentary, me testing that the system works. Um, so I get to the point of a DAS cluster being set up and then go, nice. <laughs> <laughs> what tends to happen a lot these days is that certain projects who make heavy use of Jupyter Notebook will ship example notebooks with their projects and those things integrate with Dask and things like that. And it, so that's, it, it seems to be how a lot of projects are documenting their use now is by shipping example notebooks. So it's, it's, I wouldn't necessarily say providing examples for all of those should be on Jasmine um, because that's just yeah. not sustainable. But I would definitely be interested in coming up with a couple more examples. So if you've got something that you want to do and can't, get into contact with us and we can work on an example that is similar to the area because that would be really good, especially that's using stuff out of the CDA archive, which is the kind of selling point, I guess, of the notebook service. Yeah. Uh, I just found this, this, I caught my eye in the in the video, is this is how it's constructing. It's like DAG and filling up the different parts of the process. Any more questions? Yeah. 
Thanks. Um, is there any way that this could be called from the Jasmine external cloud? Um, from the Jasmine external um, cloud. User management is a bit of a challenge there because yeah. the users in the external cloud aren't Jasmine users to contact through. We are going to do some investigations to spell about how we could potentially do some, but the DAC like potentially we could use a service account or a shared account to access the DAC. Um, through the external cloud, so the external cloud tenancy could have a user that could access that gateway, but there would be a lot of investigation we would need to do there to work out the feasibility. Okay, right, thanks.